So with question one, what we have is a very simple circuit. We've got two inputs, P and Q, and the first gate that P meets is a NOT gate. So this NOT gate, of course, reverses whatever signal is coming into it. So if a one is coming in, it'll produce a zero, and if a zero is coming in, it'll produce a one. The second gate you see down the bottom right is an AND gate. And the AND gate only produces a one if both inputs are a one. Okay, so if we follow through the different scenarios, the first scenario is a zero and a zero. So that means this is going to be a zero and this is going to be a zero. Now if we follow that through, a zero going into a NOT gate produces a one. So that'll be a one that goes in down there into the AND gate and a zero into the AND gate below. And remember the AND gate will only produce a one if both inputs are one. So in this case, it'll produce a zero. So that'll be a zero. Okay, so the second scenario is a zero and a one. So again, if we reset, so looking now at this scenario, a zero and a one. So again, the zero is going to turn into a one and the Q one is going to come in here and the AND now has two ones, so it's going to produce a one. That's that. Third scenario is a one and a zero. So the one is going in here, the zero here, so this is going to be a zero, and the one is going to turn into a zero. So we've got two zeros, and of course neither of those are a one, so it's going to produce a zero. And the last scenario is two ones. So we put in our two ones. The one into the P is going to turn into a zero, because the not gate, and this is going to stay a one. They aren't both one, so the gate is going to produce a zero at the end. And there you have your truth table is zero, one, zero, zero. With this question, it's quite complicated. So what we've done is we've broken it down into different stages. So we've, we can see our three inputs, A, B, and C, and we've added these intermediate stages, P, Q, R, and S. And finally, your final output will be T. So we'll start off by just looking at the part we call in P. So P is the product of this AND gate up here. Okay, so if I just label that. So P is the product of that AND gate. So that AND gate is concerned with the input from A and B only. So if we're just looking at A and B here, down on our table. So if two zeros go into an AND gate, it's gonna produce a zero. Remember, an AND gate will only produce a one if both inputs are one. a one and a one and one is going to produce a one so again we're looking just at the a and b columns here to produce the p output so now we've got all the different scenarios for p let's look at the q scenarios so you can see that the q is a product of this or gate and remember an or gate produces a one if either input is a one or both so it's taking its input from b here so you can see that B is one of the inputs coming in, and you can see that C is the other input. So this time for Q, we are looking at B and C. So if either of them are a one, Q will produce a one. So in this case, they're gonna be a zero, a one, a one, a one, a zero, a one, a one, and a one. And that's what the truth table for Q looks like. If we look at R now, you can see that R is a product of this AND gate. And the AND gate is getting an input from C and from B. So again, we're looking at C and B into this AND gate. So again, we're looking at these two columns. And remember the AND gate, the output has to have two inputs of one to produce a one. So zero and zero is going to produce a zero. That's the output of the R. If we're looking at S, S is the product of this AND gate. And of course the input to this AND gate is Q and R. So now we're looking at these two columns to figure out S. And now we've completed S. 
So we've completed all the intermediate steps. All that's left to do now is get our final output. Our final output is on an OR gate and it's coming from P and S. So again, I'll just highlight, we're looking at this column and this column. And it is an OR gate. So if there's a one in either column, it's gonna produce a one. And that's it. We've traced it all the way through the circuit and we've got our output depending on the input A, B and C. You can see that these questions are a lot easier when you break them down into stages. With this question things have got a little bit more complicated because we've introduced new symbols. So we recognise this symbol already, that's a NOT gate. It reverses the input that it receives. Now this looks like an OR gate but it's got the little bubble at the end. So what we call this is a NOR gate. And very simply, if you take the OR gate output that we'd usually expect, the NOR gate reverses that output. So we're gonna see that again in a second. Likewise, this is a NAND gate. Again, it's an AND gate that's been negated. So in other words, it's gonna give you exactly the opposite output that you'd expect from an AND gate. And down here, we've got what's called an exclusive OR gate. An exclusive OR gate is an OR gate that only produces one if either of the inputs is one. It will not produce a one if both inputs are one or if both inputs are zero. So again, we've got these intermediary steps that we can use before we get to the output X. So we can call them whatever we want. So let's call them D, E and F and let's label them. So let's look at D here. Let's look at E here, and let's look at F here at this point. So let's begin with D. D is coming from the input A through a NOT gate. So if we're just looking at column A here, if A is zero, D is gonna produce the opposite to that, which is a one, and so on. So we can work our way down. So the next one is zero, so it's gonna produce a one, and so on. Okay, so that's D completed. Now let's look at E. So E is getting its input or its output of E is coming from a NOR gate. And a NOR gate has taken two inputs. It's taken D and it's also taken in B. So again, we're looking at column B here and we're looking at column D. Now an OR gate would usually put out a one if either of the inputs is one and if they're both one. But a NOR gate reverses that. So, whereas an OR gate, if it took two zeros, would produce a zero, in this case, two zeros is the only combination that will produce a one. So again, looking at B and D, that's gonna produce a zero, that's gonna produce a zero, that's gonna produce a zero, zero. So you can see, for E, there's only one combination of B and D that produces a one and that is when they are both zero, because an OR gate acts the opposite of an OR gate. Looking at F, F is taking its input from A and C, and it's going into an exclusive OR. So if we just sketch out what an exclusive OR looks like, if we had an input A and B and the exclusive OR, we'll do a little table. So exclusive R works like this. It only produces a one if a single input is a one. So that will be a zero, that will be a one, that will be a one, and that will be a zero. So whereas in an R gate, the final input there, one and one, would normally produce a one. In an exclusive R gate, it produces a zero. Okay, so we're looking at columns A and we're looking at column C. So a zero and a zero, we look at our little table there it's going to produce a zero and that's our F gate complete now if we look at the final gate it's a NAND gate so again a NAND gate is slightly different from a NAND gate in that it produces the opposite results so if we quickly do up this table 
an AND gate would look like this. So this is the one we're used to. It would be a 0, a 0, a 0 and a 1. So a NAND gate is the opposite of that. And it's going to produce a 1, 1, 1, 0. And you can see that they are opposites. So for this case, we're going to be looking at F and E. The only time we're going to produce a 0 here is if they are both 1. there you have it we've worked our way through the circuit and we found out our output is one 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 zero one one one